This is what appears to be standard nine millimeter, but it absolutely is not. And the way that I figured this out is kind of crazy. You see, last year I got some soft body armor from both AR500 and also RTS Tactical. Just like this bulletproof backpack you see right here. And as I shot both of these brands of body armor with regular FMJ like you see here, they stopped it just as they should. However, when I loaded up this ammunition, it punched straight through the body armor like nobody's business. The crazy part is this was for two different brands and they were both rated to stop nine millimeter. And normally they did stop nine millimeter until we used this. That's because this is something called lead-free ammunition. But why the heck did this happen? Well, this has some interesting properties that I think are allowing it to penetrate soft body armor. And to put it to the test, we're gonna shoot our bulletproof level three backpack. But what are these weird properties that are allowing it to do this? Whereas regular ammunition is made from lead, this 1776 lead free ammunition is made with bonded steel, AKA steel that's been glued together into a projectile. That means that our lead should be a lot softer and our lead free ammunition should be a lot more rigid, allowing that lead free ammunition to pass through barriers more easily, which we're actually gonna put to the test with this cinder block. We're gonna hit the bottom with a regular round of lead FMJ, and then the top we're gonna hit with this lead free round. This should show us which one has greater penetration ability. Both of these we're firing out of the Gearson Influencer X, a nine millimeter 1911 that has been helping us out a ton for this test. First up, our lead core regular FMJ rounds. Next up, that lead-free round of ammunition. Our FMJ smacked the bottom and punched a hole, and so did the lead-free round. But take a look at the inside. Once it passed through, that lead round didn't leave much of a mark. In fact, we can find the bullet right here. Whereas that lead-free round punched in the top and then left a massive crater on the other side, showing that it really did punch through quite a bit more than a regular FMJ. But I don't think that's just because of the material. I think it's also because steel is lighter than lead. So the bullet flies down the barrel faster than a lead round would. And because it's flying so much faster, it gives it greater penetration ability. But that did make me wonder if the lightness of the round would cause reliability when firing. However, this is what I found. It cycles just fine in every single gun I own because the recoil is just a little bit flatter, making it easier to manage the gun. And because it punched into the cinder block so well, of course we have to see if it's going to punch through a car better than regular FMJ. First up, we have a regular round of FMJ. Three, two, one. We got our entrance hole right here and coming around the back of the vehicle. We have no new holes to speak of. Now let's try that lead free round. Three, two, one. We punched in right there. Oh my goodness, you guys, take a look at this. It did punch through both doors, unlike FMJ. That is some seriously cool information I did not expect to see. This is shaping up to be a really cool round. Now let's shoot that body armor, but I'm kind of curious if these have a difference in energy on impact. So we have a five gallon water jug and we're just gonna shoot them. In theory, they shouldn't, but these tests have surprised me before and I'm bringing you along for the ride to understand this valuable information with me. First up FMJ and then lead free. That's the FMJ and that's the lead free. We got all this water rushing out and looking inside we didn't capture either of the bullets. We got two exits so they seem to perform about the same on a ballistic water target. And finally of course we have our level three body armor backpack. It's sewn into that back panel so it kind of feels like a normal backpack maybe a little bit heavier but it can stop nine millimeter. First, we're gonna hit it with regular FMJ to show you that it in fact can work against normal ammo. And then we're gonna hit it with that 1776 lead free stuff. If it goes through, I promise it's not because it's bad body armor. Again, I've tried this with multiple brands of level three body armor, not just AR500 soft body armor. I know you were getting in the comments about that. First up, we got regular FMJ, three, two, one. Straight in from the FMJ, but flipping it over, we got no pass through. You can feel the lump though. Next up, we have that lead free 1776 round. The fact that it didn't move much usually means one thing. Yep, guys, we got it. 
Look at the impact even after it passed through that body armor. It zipped through like butter. And if you thought it was just a fluke that it stopped the first round, we got a bunch of FMJ. And flipping it over, you can see none of those went through, except for this guy, which I actually missed. But all of the body armor hits got stopped perfectly, except for that 1776 round. And what's crazy is that's not the most interesting part. What's the most interesting is what we see when we open this up. With just a quick slice, we can see that inside the body armor is packaged in a nice little containment vessel. And slicing this open, we see round upon round of FMJ stacked on top of each other that did not go through. But it was this one round of lead-free ammunition that blazed right through. And if we shake this thing, we start to get bullets falling out. I mean, as I peel through, it just blows my mind that you can stop a bullet in less than three inches, but it's also crazy that there was that round of ammunition that ripped straight through. So do you think it's a good thing we found a round of ammo that can go through soft body armor, or do you think it's a bad thing? Let me know in the comments and subscribe for more.